Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. This is Real Magic Review, and this is Focusing on Magic by Andy Gladwin. So please like, subscribe, share, check out Card Magic Course. Uh, that would be lovely. And the sharing it is brilliant. When people share it, it just bumps up the views, and then people will find me. A few people have said recently, why haven't we got more subscribers? And it's just time, and that's fine. Um, but, but a bit of a bump would be lovely, so uh, that, that'd be great. Focusing on magic, this couldn't have come at a better time for me. I've been talking to a few people about this, uh, my friend Alec, Colin. Uh, we're all kind of wanting to study more. It's something that, that has not gone away for me, that the fact that, that I need, I want to, to sit with magic books more, more, it's never less, I'm never going, I want, I want to study less, you know. Uh, so this has come at a brilliant time because I, I, I'm reviewing books now and I'm struggling with the fact that it doesn't feel right to skim them. I, I can't review a book properly unless I've read it all, it takes a long time to read. Um, I'm not a speed reader, I can't help but find the trick and no, I don't want to pick the cards up and then I end up picking the cards up and doing the trick. Um, so this is really interesting to me. And, and obviously because of those things, I'm fascinated with the process. I've always been fascinated with the learning process. Um, there's a great book called The Four Hour Chef by Tim Ferriss, which isn't just about chefing, it's about learning and the best ways to learn. And it's something that I think is so important. And when I think about why I love magic, yes, I do love magic, but I love learning. And, and I think I love learning probably that's what makes me love magic so much because there is so much to learn. So, and obviously I love performing and all that kind of stuff, but magic just gives, it's, it's such a rich thing for that. And when this came out, it was like, oh, someone's got to tell me what to do. <laughs> please, please tell me what to do. Uh, so, and it kind of does uh, in, in the way that you want it to do. So, of course, it's one of the astonishing essays. Um, and these are really nice books that, you know, they could have got away with chucking these in a PDF and people would have bought them, I think. But they're really nice. The pictures are great. And, um, and even, or oh, you know, like this. See, this is what I love geeking out. It, telling you little tips, little things, I'm not going to give away too much, but the people will pause it and read it. But little tips of how to read magic books. What we all love is a picture of someone's magic library, don't we? So we can have a look at it. And I was gutted on this because it's got a picture of Andy's magic library. Um, but I want to see the rest of it. I want, to, I, want to, I, want to, I want to turn the page. I was like, is the rest of it on there? No. And a picture of how his boxes are, which I'm going to completely steal. So the first thing to say is this is a practic really practical book. It, it it goes into the nitty gritty of here's an idea, try this. And that's why I even, because I can't make decisions. I go to, I go to Ikea and I think, right, I want some storage cases. And I look at the choices and I, I get all upset and I don't get anything because I can't visualize what will work. So if, for those of you that want that practical, you know, what do I do with this? It does have that what's in it for me factor. But let's go back a moment. Cause it's not just about the book. I like the, the things these, these books throw up. Throw up, that's a better way of putting it than that, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, this made me think about this issue we all have with buying magic books. We, we buy and buy and buy and buy, and we know we buy before we've read and then buy again. And I have an image when I buy a magic book, and a trick, I suppose. I have an image of me sitting down reading it. Funny that, isn't it? And that's what you do, you, of, of, of maybe all the coffee, learning there with my cards, and that's what we want. We, we think, right, if I read that, it's going to make me a better magician. If I actually get it, you know, it's got these tricks in it, it's got these moves in it. If I sit and learn that, so I don't need anything else. And then you take it home and you, you're just about to do it, and then you see an ad and it goes, and there's another book that's coming out, but that. And then you get that, and the minute you buy that one, this one loses a bit of bit of its shine, doesn't it? You kind of go, well, that's the new one. And and I know this is nothing new. I've talked about this. Everybody talks about this. And, and it reminded me and actually mentions a Darwin Ortiz uh, book called The Se Next Book Syndrome or something like that. But it is that thing of, you know, imagine if we actually read a whole book before going on again. And that idea of, of reading the book making us a better magician, people put that down quite a lot, don't they? They kind of go... You know, it, well, it's not going to make you the better magician, but it, but it will. You know, it will. Most of my books up there, if I actually sat down with the book, read it, I would become a better magician. So I think that there is something in that it will make me a better magician, but we've just got to do it, haven't we? And that's why we cling on to these people that can help us with that. And, and there's an awareness because Andy clearly has been through this journey. Andy's someone that reads a lot of magic books for once. So 
you know, thankfully we're not getting the advice for someone that doesn't do it. He's a, he geeks out on this stuff. So, he, so his years of trial and error has resulted in this little book that can hopefully please help us all. So very early on in the book, it, and actually throughout the book, it's, you know, there's, there's lots about Roberto Jobby, Vernon, Ascanio, Tamariz, all these people that have written on the subject before. Um, and it, it, the question that came to me is, well, the inspiration that came to me straight away in the first few pages was, you know, when you hear these masters talk about, you know, you should dedicate your life to magic. That's a big question, is it? Like, what, should I dedicate my life to magic? Is that, and I am at a crossroads now of, that I, I think I want to, I think I want to do this, you know, I want to talk to people and, and help you. So maybe it's time to, and, and what sacrifices does that entail? So for most of us, and me included, I can't do that. I can't just go, right, I want to get, but that's kind of what I want to do. So where, how far towards that can I get that's realistic? And, and, and I think probably a little bit more than I think. So I think to, to sacrifice watching box sets and things like that in the evening for, for the magic study is, is actually something that's going to happen more if I hear other people that have done it say, yes, you can do this and it will, it's possible to, to do that. Do you see what I mean? So, so the inspiration comes very quickly and that's what a book like this is for, isn't it? It's for inspiration. So the first, there's three main sections in this. The first is what to study, talking about this idea that don't spread yourself too thin. And I don't want to give away too much because it's sure well it will say everything in the book. But but that's I, sometimes we need to hear that, don't we? Because we we think we want to be a magician, and a magician is a that's every that's like God, it could be anything from from doing a, doing that to doing a really complex uh, sort of illusion on stage. I mean, it's it, it's huge, and some of us do that. We get tar bells, and we're on going to work through them and become a magician and. I mean, Tar Bell must have known his stuff, eh? I mean, how long, because there's so much. So, so we can't do that. So how do we choose our material? And this is, again, it's okay that we don't learn everything. It's okay that we haven't read all the magic books. And, and Andy gives us a structure and, 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 and a, uh, a blueprint really to help us with that and tells us how we can decide. So we go into how to shortlist tricks. And, and again, I'm not very good at this. I, I find it hard to visualize what's gonna work. Now, I spoke to, um, I think I mentioned this the other day, I spoke to Mark Elsden, and he was saying that he can read a book and straight away see what's gonna be a worker. And I think I can, I think I can see what's gonna be a worker, but there's a, there's a bit in between, isn't there? Where there's the obvious stuff where, you know, if you read in a book, you're gonna get a bottle and put it through a table, or you're gonna get a car that's gonna end up on the ceiling. You, you don't look at that and go, oh, I don't know if that'll work. But there are things that surprise us. And, and how to shortlist those tricks are quite difficult. So I think that Andy goes into this a little bit as well, and. and and again, it's, it's, I suppose it's fitting it to what we want and, and what we want to achieve with our magic. And what I did find helpful was, again, go, going back to this idea of, of the opposite, really, of spreading ourselves too thin, as actually going down, a, down the research route. And, and Andy talks about his own experiences with this. And this, this is really interesting because, again, he's someone that has done it. He has written a lot of books. He's very prolific. There's a lot of stuff coming out. So I'm always interested when I see that and I go, well, how on earth do you get the time to do that? For someone to share that with us and be honest about it, you know, because, you know, someone that works with Vanishing Ink puts books out and then talks honestly about what, how that process comes about uh, with the flaws of that process and everything. So I think that that, that was a real eye opener. And then there's a closing, a really nice closing of this essay. Um, and there's a really nice, what this quote, it's a, it's a long, there's a quote from this. It's a long process. Um, it's tiring and takes considerable work to get momentum. Now, sometimes it's not, it, it, that brought to me the, there's a, I heard it the other day, funnily enough, on a Tim Ferriss podcast about, um, from C.S. Lewis. It's not a quote from C.S. Lewis. It's a quote from Shadowlands, which is C.S. Lewis saying it. And he says something along the lines of, we read to make us feel less alone. And the performance of magic and being a magician can be a very lonely place. It doesn't mean we haven't got the clubs and we haven't got the, the societies and we haven't got the online stuff and we haven't got loads of friends and we haven't got family, but the, the actual process of sitting there learning, which is, a, I think, why a lot of people say they do it and don't. You know, They call themselves magicians, but the, you see they haven't really put the work in, and that's totally fine. But I think that it is a lonely existence to sit there on your own learning stuff. To perform is a lonely existence. I'm never with people at a gig. I'll go and say hello, do the thing, and then go home. And, and that's not, oh, poor me. That's just the way it is. So sometimes to read that, it's okay to... It is hard work. You know, it's hard to sit there with a deck of cards and a 
book or a DVD and just learn and learn and learn it. Don't, you know, we have this romantic view of it, but it's, you know, we can have the lovely table and the lovely bookshelves, but when it comes down to it, it doesn't really matter where you are, it's just hard work and it can be really dull and it can be boring. And and books like this are needed to, to pep us up a little bit. And, and I, I think that's kind of my values as well. If I can help in any way people watching this to go, you're not on your own. Look, we're all here, we're all doing it. And we're all learning and we're learning something that we're very passionate about, but sometimes that learning process can be a challenge. So books like this are there to help us with this challenge. Um, and I love, I loved reading this, you know, it, I want more of it. I want 500 pages on this, which is good because at the end it's got a reading list which will let me find those pages. And I'm going to go off now. Actually, I'm off to uh, Tromsø in, uh, in Norway and I'm taking loads on, on to read with me, which is a nightmare because I've only got my own luggage, but there you go. So thanks very much. That's Andy Gladwin's uh, Focusing on Magic. Uh, I will do the rest of the astonishing essays. I've actually got here the ABCs of Magic by Rob Zabrecki. I haven't picked that up. I might have picked that up during the review, but um, that's what I'm going to do next, I think. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sitting with this for so long. Um, thank you for listening to me. And any feedback is great. Have a lovely, lovely day. Uh, my name is Steve Faulkner. Check out the Card Magic course. Share it. Like and subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya.